All right, you guys, so I hope everybody's doing really well. Today, I hope will be quite a fun video. I know all this zone two rave and, and zones in general in running can be quite probably confusing. I have the luxury of, you know, going into a lab. I can do that a couple of times a year and I get these sort of like metrics that then helps to distinguish certain zones. Today, I want it to be more of a story while I show you the actual training that I did today, which was a zone two run. It was probably like 40 to 45 minutes on the front end of the session. I'll explain why I did that. And then I move into harder reps, which you probably haven't seen me do much of on the channel, mainly because they're bloody hard to do. And so I can't record myself doing hard reps because I'm working. And luckily lately I've had a bit of help with some filming. So I'm gonna explain why I sort of did the steady sort of zone two run at the start of the session. Then I sort of get into those harder reps and a little story to give you some background into steady running, you know, what the f is zone two? Is there any point to it? Should you be doing it? If you can't get in a lab, you know, is there any way that you can sort of figure out how to get your sort of zone two dialed in? But ultimately we're just trying to get you better at running. So let's ignore certain terms let's ignore the fact that this isn't a sorry let's not ignore the fact that this isn't such a black or white thing you know you, you can't fail you can you can do a zone two run poorly where the majority of it you weren't in zone two but i can do a zone two run poorly even sitting at the exact heart rate that i've sort of been told and that can come down to nutrition temperature on the day where's the body at generally and so the heart rate might have been a little bit skewed but let's get into today's video and I'll let you know how everything went. Okay, so naturally this boom, zone two boom, you know, is, is all the rave. And, and I don't want the channel to ever become a, a place where I jump on, you know, other people's ideas or, or I jump on the hot topics for that moment in time. The reason I'm posting about zone two is because I was sitting in St. Moritz. And I, I feel like I've been training for you know a, a period of time again where things should have started to go better i had the two teeth infections we got those removed all the antibiotics were out of the system everything had cleared up things should have been getting better and you know my heart rate variability during the uh, teeth infection stuff was like 40 and now it's up to like 68 i think it was today like the progress was huge but i was thinking like what the in terms of like my fitness like what's going on and the reason I say that is because it felt like I had trained long enough and what felt like hard enough on certain days the things should have been getting to a better place you know and and basically they weren't so I took a bit of time when I was you know up in St Moritz and and I had a look back at like moments in my sort of running career where things have been going well moments where you know races have gone really well or or even trainings just look really good by pace and by numbers and and the real apparent thing let me rewind a little bit also in 2006 2004 2005 2006 this is a long time ago I was a very ordinary runner you know I, I certainly wasn't special I certainly wasn't winning things um, and and I certainly wasn't like one of the best right and and I guess what happened was I, I started doing like double running I started running in the morning and then I would go and do a session that night I do this like two or three times a week I used to never tell anybody that I would do that run that morning I guess it was the first time that I realized oh shit I can handle a bit more and, and by doing that, it makes me better. But the way I used to do these runs was I would, I, it would be a five mile run. I, I would leave my house in, in Belfast up, you know, sort of Four Winds area, if anyone knows Belfast. And I would run down these bloody hills, which sucked. And then I would kind of do like, um, probably like two mile up the road, two mile back, and then I'd have to go back up the hill. But the key to these runs was that I was doing them at basically six minutes per mile or, or 340 to 345 per K. You're, you're talking about back then, that was a pretty hard run. Like it wasn't easy. It certainly wasn't zone two. But the reason I'm, I'm getting you to that place or that mindset or that sort of headspace is that when you 
actively decide that you're going to give a run purpose. That's the message here. And we're going to come back to looking at the training at St. Moritz. But I set out those mornings because I wanted to be better at running. That was a fact. That's all I wanted. I wasn't running at that time in the morning before school, you know, for a love of running. It probably existed a little bit, but the the hidden thing behind all this was I want to be better at running, right? And so you're watching a video like a day like today where I'm doing this steady run around the park before I do the harder reps. And I've left the house with a sort of hidden agenda that I'm doing this to be better. It just so happens that I've now got my fitness to a place that I can call this run zone two and it's not easy. But I think the problem is that for a lot of people, zone two isn't developed to a place that you can run at a sort of harder effort and call it zone two. I get to run at what feels like a pretty solid effort and a pretty solid pace. And so I actively have to like, not attack that run, but I have to show some enthusiasm. I can't just jog around the park. I don't necessarily think my progress by adding in steady runs or or, or zone two, I might be lucky that there is a big benefit to zone two, but I also just genuinely believe that when you make that decision to start targeting some runs, whether you push them a bit, whether they go right up to threshold, whether they go right up to VO2 max, I don't know the answer. I just know that when I started committing a long time ago, 2005, 2006, to some of these runs that had intent behind them, that had this like, I want to be better. I want to beat people. I'm doing this because in my next race, the people that beat me in the last race, I want to beat them next time. And so now when we fast forward to leading up to say Dublin Marathon where I ran really well or, or, you know, London Marathon, um, sorry, not London, the 2020 when I ran 209, you're looking at me doing 40 to 50 miles a week, 40 to 50 miles a week at an intensity. Call it zone two, call it steady, call it whatever you want. I was doing runs at an effort that wasn't easy, that wasn't a jog, that wasn't just floating around the park. There was a commitment, there was an intent. And so as you see me coming around the park here today, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working. It's not, it's not easy. Normally when I run, I'm going to run at, you know, 125 to 135 heart rate. That's going to put me at about seven minutes per mile, 640, maybe towards the end. Today, you're looking at 550 to six. I've had to leave the house with a little bit of, you know, grit behind the, the momentum or grit behind the agenda. I, I want to achieve something today. And I think the true progress happened with a bit of a, yes, there was an advantage to run in zone two. I have no doubt about that. I, I appreciate that is a big boom right now. I appreciate it probably did great things. But a long time ago, those runs were definitely not zone two. God knows what my lactate would have been at the end of them. But I had this idea that I wanted to be better and I committed to that. And so I think in doing so, I moved my physiology to a place that it got better. So I probably indirectly improved zone two back in the day just by running a bit harder and bringing my fitness up and running a bit more sort of volume per week. And so my encouragement here is, yes, you can get tested in the lab. Yes, you might even be told that for zone two, you have to slow down. But the message behind what I'm doing here today, this steady, this sort of, you know, yes, there's a label on it right now, zone two. But this steady is an active choice to go out there and get better that day. I throw it on the front end of the session because when I did the maths and I seen that, oh my God, in in those buildups where I felt really good and the fitness has been in a really good place, I've been doing 40 to 50 miles a week. So I sort of did the maths on that and realized that that's probably four hours a week, five hours a week. I'm not trying to do four to five hours a week right now, but I'm thinking to myself, what I don't want to do is, you know, enter a marathon and then suddenly have to do four to five hours a week. I also noticed that in the London Marathon build-up, you're looking at 45 minutes per week when I ran 216. Did I run 216 because of the teeth infections or a combination of I did have teeth infections? Maybe that's why I was jogging more on easy days and not running steadier. Who knows? So the facts are, you know, teeth infection, you know, blah, 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 blah. The facts are in that build-up to running 209, in that build-up to, you know, absolutely crushing, you know, Dublin and, and being able to podium and, and, and run incredible and be able to race hard on race day. It came after periods 
of chunking together, you know, probably three to five hours a week of not just zone two, but for at the, at the elite and professional level, you've got zone two to a place that it's, that it's a pretty tough run, that it's, a, that it's a run that you have to sort of focus, that it's a run that you have to pay attention. You don't get the luxury of just going to the park and just jogging around. So today I do that steady run on the front end and then I get stuck into some VO2 reps. VO2 is another area that I've preached quite heavily on this channel. I, I believe that it really raises your ceiling. It, it raises your potential to just be a better bloody athlete, to just be faster at running. That's so I hope what we're all looking for here. And, and when I don't include VO2 in what I'm doing, and a couple of weeks go by where I haven't sort of been doing VO2, I really do struggle with it. And there was a couple of times I noticed in this session where I'm just finding it hard work. And it's sort of hard for me to comprehend that I've been able to run at some of these heart rates for, you know, 10K, 10 mile. I even averaged, I think, like 178 heart rate in, in you know, Lauren Half Marathon. Now, heart rate's a lot higher in races, but the hidden message there is that if you're not working on these things, you can almost lose them as quick as you gain them. But I chunk that day together to make it just a, a decent day where I'm, I'm banking time in that sort of like steady area. And I love doing that in the warm up. I, I, it might make you a little bit tired for the VO2 reps, but when you build up to it, you, you end up coming away with a really good day. You, better to do the steady sort of portion first so that you're not spiking the effort and spiking the lactate and, and you'll get a benefit out of that. And then you do a bit of an easy jog. You can change into, you know, some sort of like faster shoes. And, and I purposely today went for, it is a faster shoe, but this is a new flat that Under Armour, you know, is, has created and, and I believe will be out soon. And, and it's not, it's more for when you're on the track or, or maybe when you're doing hill reps or maybe you're gonna race a 10K. And it's back to sort of a lower profile, a little bit like stiffer, less spongy. And I think then there's a, a nice feeling to that, that it might make the legs a bit stronger. I think too much running in this sort of marathony, you know, spongy shoe, which is awesome for race day, can often just maybe make the legs a little bit soft. And I want to bring back a bit of that stiffness, a bit of that firmness, which then goes hand in hand with, you know, doing, doing this sort of work, doing this like, you know, VO2 work. That for me was a, was a really good day of training. I, I, I'm not delighted with the, the sort of numbers in the VO2 stuff. I, I, I need that to be quicker. I really want that to be quicker, um, but I've neglected it for a bit and, I, and I've sort of just came back from altitude and there's all this nonsense. Um, I do can tell you that that session was almost um, a week ago now. We're, we're at the weekend now and I did it on Tuesday. And already yesterday I had a much better session and that's getting over that hangover post altitude. You'll probably find that next Tuesday or you know the next time I do those sort of VO2 reps, instead of sitting at 252 to 255, you might already be at 248 to 250. That is a little bit to do with coming back from altitude, but it's just how progress works when you start targeting this stuff. The key with the steadier stuff, or, you know, I, I don't know if you're gonna be able to call it zone two. I honestly don't. I can tell you a long time ago when I used to do them, there wouldn't have been zone two, but there was intent to it. There was a steadiness to it. I had to work a bit. And I can tell you I got a lot better at running. The key to that stuff is that often, you might worry that you know easy days need to be really easy and and you know you're you're not sure where to fit it into your week when i start adding in that sort of steadier stuff that you know running with intent i find that the sessions get better it would blow your mind <laughs> and and you might find that too but but do it gradually so you do have to work a bit it's not as easy because you can't just go and jog around the park like i've rhymed on about but you might find that it starts almost like helping your sessions get better, helping your races get better, helping that you know fitness improve. My advice would certainly be to keep an eye on heart rate and maybe put a, a cap on that heart rate. If you've raced a half marathon or you know, you've raced a marathon and you know what your heart rate would be in those, you don't wanna be pushing too far into those sort of areas. I think you wanna to build to be doing a couple of runs per week 
But if I'm being totally honest, it doesn't always fit. I, I think one thing I've learned with running is sometimes you have to see it as, okay, in the build up to London or the build up to Dublin, when I ran really well, this is the sort of training that I did per week, right? And that's 40 to 50 miles of steady running. I don't know how much threshold. I don't know how much VO2, you know, a lot. And it won't always make sense. Sometimes you can get too cute and too smart and, and you're kind of like, I'll do a hard day here. I'll do an easy day here. I'll do a medium day here. I'll go back to a hard day. It looks cute. It looks brilliant. It looks really scientific and, and perfect. Running doesn't always work that way. It's not always perfect. You know, th that build up to Dublin recently, oh, there was no cuteness. It was just do a session and then the next day run pretty hard. And then the day after that run pretty hard. And then you're back to another session. And some days you were tired and some days you were slower. But it was all about getting the bulk of the work done. When you get the bulk of the work done, results follow. If you don't handle the bulk of the work and you get tired, well, you might next time. And it's about striving to get to a place where you can handle all this. And if you want to handle it all better, take care of your gym, take care of your recovery, eat really well, sleep really well, hydrate. Look after the little details so that you can handle the bulk of the work. If you're going to get greedier with the training, if you're going to go in that park and hit a run a bit harder and then do your normal session, and then if you're going to come back the next day and go, I'm going to go steady again, well then really double down on the recovery stuff perfect opportunity to <laughs> plug the running school but in all seriousness there's so many routines on there that are that are free you know recovery routines the foam rolling stuff the pre-run activation stuff go check it out at you know joggingroom.com that's the stuff that if you're going to push the training you must actively have things in place that's helping that recovery and that's super important so it was a good day it was a decent steady run I wasn't happy with the paces in the 1Ks, and, and we can call the 1Ks like zone 4 to zone 5, if, if you're, depends what model of zones you're working in. I can tell you that they were roughly around sort of like 10K effort, and then towards the end pushing up to, you know, maybe even like 5K effort. It doesn't mean that I'm going to go run a 5K right now in, you know, over 14 minutes. It's, it's in the park, you know, I'm not tapered, I've done the steady run before, but, but maybe I am. This stuff progresses quickly it progresses well once you start doing it but you also lose it quickly so i hope you gain something out of today i hope you you know found value in like zone two yes sexy amazing beautiful little word to throw out there but it's the active choice to run with a little bit of intent check out the running school joggingroom.com training plans on there you can also check out merchandise on joggingclo.com like subscribe do all those lovely things and take care